Hey everyone, how's it going? Hopefully you can see me okay. Um, still having some internet troubles here, working on it. It's a mix of some weird problem with my router and some strain on the network here in California. They're, they're limiting a lot of upload speeds. So I'm sorry if I'm a little bit laggy tonight, hopefully a little better than a couple nights ago. Um, but how are you guys doing tonight? Um, I just was chatting with most of you anyways, but <laughs> good to see you again. Um, yeah, so got a few samples to do tonight. Um, a lot of these, some of these I've had before, um, but been like very spread out on different streams. Some of them I've never had before, and some of them were recommended by you. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm going to start out with, um, Let's start out with the, so Perry recommended I do the Dickel Barrel Select. I do not have the Dickel Barrel Select, but I do have, I was either going to do a Knob Creek to go off the Dickel thing, but I do have the Wild Turkey 13-year-old Distiller's Reserve. Of course, I did have a bottle. I split it with Brandon, who's in the chat here today. Um, what's up, by the way? Um, so... What do you guys think? Should I do the Wild Turkey Distillers Reserve or a Knob Creek Bake? Up to you guys completely. <laughs> so just going to make sure that I am good and like, I, I really don't know what's up with my Wi-Fi issues lately. It's 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 been a struggle. So I do apologize if I do cut out you guys, <laughs> but I'm going to keep going. Like you guys told me, I got to keep going. So, okay, we got one vote for um, the Wild Turkey. Two votes. Okay, three votes Wild Turkey. You guys are probably going to recommend Wild Turkey. Um, I'm not sure, Don. I was listening to one of my computer speakers, so I didn't notice if it wasn't stereo. Okay, y'all are all going for the turkey, so let's go for the turkey. So this one is, oh, that's a good court pop. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Um, so let me pause that. I might just trying to prevent some, anything that would delay, <laughs> delay the stream. So pausing that. So this is a 13 year old wild turkey. Um, I believe Perry said it was a 91 proof. Um, this was an export only. This was found in a, uh, um, what do you call them? Duty free store, duty free store. So yeah, we actually, um, so how we got our hands on this bottle, we actually know a guy that is friends with a flight attendant and he likes to get her to bring home a lot of bottles. And this happens to be one of the bottles they brought home. And of course, I mean, of course I, bought it from him but he offered it at a really good price basically just slightly over what he bought it for you gotta make some profit um yeah so brandon and i split a bottle um so that's what this one is so it's been a while since i've had this one so i'm excited to try it again um thank you for the inspiration perry um by the way if you don't know him uh perry is part of this is my bourbon podcast check him out um he's in the chat um check out his youtube channel his podcast yeah just overall check him out <laughs> so yeah so as perry was saying um it doesn't really smell like, a, I mean, it's a little wild turkey y, but like, um, I think he was talking about it. it didn't taste so much like a wild turkey. And I remember having that same thought. Um, although coming back to it, 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 it's more wild turkey esque than I remember it being. Now, to be fair, I haven't had a wild turkey product in a while. Um, I have a wild turkey one on one handle that I haven't opened yet, <laughs> saving it for like the desperate times when I get low on everything else. Um, yeah, I get a lot of spice here on this one. And it's only a 91 proof, so it's not like the 101 proof, so that's not the proof that's jumping out of the glass. There's something jumping out there, though. And it's like a very strong rye spice there. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. What are you guys drinking tonight? Um, I heard some of you, I don't know if you're still in the same things you were drinking in Perry's chat, but um, if you're drinking something new, let me know. Um, but yeah, my goal tonight is to like, other than this is to get through a bunch of samples. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that's so light. Wow. So it's really spicy on the nose, but on the palate, yeah, it's, it's, it's really flavorful. It has that spice flavor, but it's so light and mellow. Um, just curious, have any of you guys had the distiller's reserve from Wild Turkey? Um, I should have put up a photo of the bottle. This was like a last minute. <laughs> I didn't plan to drink this one, but, um, yeah. So I, I have not pulled, I have not tried this in a while. <sighs> it's, 
it's nice, but the, the, the spice is interesting because it's way more on the nose than on the taste. Charles Wilson, Wilson's got some Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Always a good choice. Oh, Steven's had it before. Antique 107. Also a great... Weller 107 is just... I keep coming back to it. It's honestly one of my favorite whiskeys I've had. Um, in terms of, like, not readily available, but in terms of price point, I mean, it's just it's just a solid option. Yeah, this Wild Turkey, it's like... It's interesting because it's not the typical wild turkey. It's bold and spicy, but not the kind of way that you would expect from a wild turkey. Yeah, that one's just, you gotta think on that one. I mean, it's its fantastic whiskey. I mean, I, I don't regret the purchase at all. It's just not what you would expect from a higher proof wild turkey. Now, to be fair, the only lower proof wild turkey I've had was the, um, was the, um, I would like to compare this against the Russell's Reserve single barrel, sorry, not the single barrel, Russell's Reserve small batch tenure, um, because this one is a 13 year, and that one is also, I think it's 90 proof, is the Rus Russell's Reserve is around 90 proof, right? Um, I think this will be really, really fun to compare between that one, because I think they're very similar products. Um, yeah, so, more to come without that one. I, I do want to do, like, a thorough review of it, um, but, yeah, let's take some <laughs> deep dives. To get into that these, these are more have either had them before or we got some iw harper 15 year Michter's 10 kentucky owl rye batch one um a four roses single barrel pick from bevmo um which is an oesq um we also have four roses 130th um which i i've reviewed this on the channel several times um to brandon and he's like you know what you like this more than I did, so he handed it back. So got this one to go the four roses. Um, and we also have a mini of this Highland Park Magnus. Now, I have tried this once at a tasting before, and I remember liking it. So over some of them are from you. Know, um, just gonna check my Wi-Fi here. Just, I'm honestly I'm I'm monitoring to try to find out what is eating up my Wi-Fi when I'm doing these streams. So I'm just wanted I saw it dropped out for a second, so I want to check it real quick. So um yeah it looks looks to be good though so i'm just gonna keep an eye on that just in case um that happens again so sorry about that um oh donnie see you later thanks for stopping in um yeah so let's go ahead and move on to one of the samples for tonight um yeah so again apologies if my internet drops out it's an ongoing thing that just started recently since everyone's working from home so I always use that precursor there so you guys don't think I'm just like not trying. I am. I'm literally researching it like days and days and days before the stream, not figuring out what's going on. So S sorry, Steven. Yeah, hopefully it's not as bad. T two streams ago, you guys, it was really, really bad. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it's a little better today. Though. I I'm keeping an eye on it. So let's move on to our first sample. I think I want to start with the IW Harper 15 year. This is also a sample. Um, do not have a bottle, but if you check out my thumbnail, um, the bottle of this is really freaking sexy. Let's be honest. I would probably only buy it for the bottle. <laughs> um, I mean, not that I would, not that it's not good, but that did not focus at all. But you guys, you guys got an idea of what I'm trying. <laughs> um, yeah, the bottle is sexy. It's a really nice decanter. Um, so this is a 15 year old bourbon. So I'm curious, do you guys have much info on this IW Harper? I've heard of them, I've seen the bottle everywhere, but I really don't have much info on them. I tried to research and I, I'm not finding much. Do we know who distills this? Do they actually distill their own stuff? If any of you know more about it, please let us know because I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about this one. It's one I've been wanting to try for a while. Spoiler alert, I did try it <laughs> on another stream recently, um, but I was also several pours in, so we're gonna start with it tonight. Yeah, only one for the bottle. It's a really good looking bottle. Steven says the juice is meh. I've heard. Um, I was trying to find if I can find out info about like where it's actually from, because I, I wouldn't imagine they steal their own stuff. But like, oh no, oh this says Heaven Hill. Ooh, ooh, that makes me a little excited. Fifteen year old Heaven Hill. It is forty three percent. Um, but this thing says Heaven Hill. I'm not sure if it's accurate or not, but potentially Heaven Hill. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but fifteen years old, you guys, you can't you can't snuff at that. Now to be fair, it's it's pretty pricey. Um, I think the what is the price limit here? Let me just. 
I think I had it saved here. Yeah, it's hundred and ten dollars. It's a little pricey, but if if you told me it was fifteen year old Heaven Hill, hundred ten dollars. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would normally say yes, but also, um, would I say yes at at eighty six proof? Eh, that's questionable. Barrel strength fifteen year old knob or Heaven Hill. Ugh, give it to me. <laughs> Um, so, Harper's Free Bland, yeah. Steven says, I.W. Harper used to be a legendary brand. Interesting. So, yeah, I, I hear about it all the time, and they, every store I've been to has a bottle of this in stock. I just never wanted to buy it, so I actually, funny story, I actually bought this from a guy online who was selling samples. I think it was like $7 or something. I was like, you know what, 7 bucks, I will gladly try a $110 bottle of bourbon, or 90 Um Brian says, is it like a 15-year-old McKenna Brown? Interesting. I've actually never tried the brown label McKenna. Um, funny enough, as much as I, I really do enjoy the single barrel. But that sounds really good. So let's go ahead and try it out, you guys. Huh. All the nose. That's a little... There's a certain note that I get on some whiskeys, and it is occasionally older ones. I almost like want to say mulch. Like, not like quite as off-putting, but very dirt like i'm just imagining this is weird but i'm imagining that this barrel was buried underground for 15 years and this is like the mud the dirt that accumulated around it i i only get that on some bottles but i'm getting that on this one yeah i mean there, there's some sweetness there though there's some caramel sweetness nothing really like henry mckenna i would say i'm not getting the the oakiness that i get on a mckenna there is oh there's a lot of that like Earthy. I, I guess earthy is a more appropriate word than dirty. <laughs> There's a lot of that earthy notes on this glass. I mean, it smells old. It definitely smells like it's 15 years old. They're definitely not lying about that one. But, um, Joseph, interesting fact, they used to advertise in Barron's and Playboy. Interesting. Well, I mean, you guys say they have a sexy bottle. That appeals to a certain audience that's just like, I need a bottle to impress people that come into my, I was going to say office or bedroom. I don't know. Whoever's the audience of Playboy, not me, obviously. <laughs> um check out the bourbon judge on youtube he talks about it i will yeah i, ha I haven't heard of that channel but i'll definitely check it out love finding new youtube channels so th the nose is a little odd to me but i'm gonna go ahead and taste it because i'm i am very curious that that low proof is interesting mouth feels not very much that earthiness is back though you know the weird thing is okay you guys know some of you guys know i had a really off bottle of new riff brandon has tried it um it was super vegetal i described it as but also earthy this has some hints of that and it, it scared me at first because it has some hints of that but i think what they're doing with this tastes right and maybe it's the age or what but i i don't actually mind this um would I pay 90 to $110 for it? Well, <laughs> luckily I didn't just spill the whole bottle. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brandon's doing some vomit emoji. I don't know. Actually, I, I actually don't mind this, and I just don't have any bias towards it. I just really like the decanter of it. Todd's having some now. He says he wishes that, um, he thinks that a higher proof would do it well. I, yeah, oh yeah, if this was like cast strength, cast strength, 15 year old, potentially Heaven Hill product, $110, take my money, just take it, because cast strength Heaven Hill is fantastic, you guys, you guys know, I don't mind this, would I pay $90 for it, I'll say this, I will maybe pay $90 for it once, and only because I get to keep the decanter, <laughs> that's, that's my reason, um, no, yeah, Brandon. So it's not it's not as off putting as that new riff pick. It just it reminded me of it at first, but it's more of the like the earthy parts of it, not the bright moss kind of notes. It's more of like the it, it's not bad. Um, honestly, yeah, I, I would buy this again, but I'm not gonna not gonna seek it out. I'll say that. I know a bad bottle of new riff hurts Ian's heart. I actually thought about keeping some of that bottle and giving it to Ian. I think we finished it. We got rid of it. <laughs> it just, it just was off. And I say that having tried three different new riff picks, four, actually Ian shared a fourth one with me. None of them have ever had that note. So it, I think it was just an off pick. And I mean, I talked about this before. A lot of stores that do picks, they try to do something that's different. So they pick the barrel that tastes not like any of the other ones. 
not that it's better. They'll just pick it because it's different. And I think that's what happened with this one. I, I just feel like they picked the one that was the weird one. They're like, no, that's our barrel. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, Wild Turkey Revival. I've not had that one. Yeah. No. Yeah. So no, New Riff in general, I'm a fan of. So I really do like the nose on this one, though. I cannot complain about this one. I actually thought I would be disappointed in this one. And I'm pretty sure last time I tried this on a stream, I was so disappointed by it. But then again, that whole stream, I had been drinking barrel proofs. I had I was like five or six drinks in. So I'll, that's why I wanted to revisit it first because I didn't want to put it down for no reason. Yeah, that was pretty good. So next we're going to move on to one that I've tried on this channel a couple. No, only once. Only once, I think. This is a sample from uh, Padawan, who's sometimes in the chat here. Um, I haven't seen him today, but this was, he gave me this sample because I actually have a bottle of this one, and I was so hesitant to open it. I was like, I, I want to try it, but I don't want to open it. Fortunately, he had a bottle of it, um, and he gave me a sample of it. So cheers to you, Juan. You're awesome. That was water, by the way. <laughs> I always feel weird because I'm like talking about something. I'm like chugging something. Rye bread with honey in it. Oh, that's good. Oh, Juan's here? Oh, sorry. I missed you. Um, yeah, so this is a sample of Mictor's Tin Rye, which, by the way, awesome little label there. Like I said, I have a bottle of this. Haven't opened it. Um, oh, yeah. What's up, Juan? <laughs> haven't opened it, but I think this sample has made me decide that I do want to open it eventually. Potentially. I mean, if it goes up like crazy value, then maybe. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm going to drink a little bit more of this one. I thought I was going to finish it off. That's actually a good bit left. So just drink a little bit more of it. Save one last sip for that moment right before I open the bottle. Yeah, so cheers to you guys. Um, Juan, what's up? Sorry I missed you that you're in the chat. Um, what are you drinking? What is everyone drinking? I saw a couple of chats earlier, but... Um, so I guess I never explained my reason for doing samples tonight. It's kind of a, not really a reason, but it's more so that um, the times that we're in, I mean, I wore the shirt for a reason. Whiskey helps. It's just like, I like variety. I'm like going through my bottles and I'm watching them go down and down and down. I'm like, oh no, like I, I really love this one. I don't want to get rid of it. So I realized that I had like 20 sample bottles and I was like, you know what? Now's a great time to drink some sample bottles. I've been sitting on these for a while. There's no reason to sit on them anymore. Um, yeah, so, by the way, how are you guys holding up? You guys doing good? Um, the reason I bring it up, so, lately in my streams, I've been avoiding the topic of the current situation in our global health crisis right now. And I know because a lot of people want this to be kind of like an escape from that. And I totally agree. I love that. But I, this is going to sound weird. But I was watching a live stream from Miley Cyrus, and <laughs> I know, and she had Selena Gomez on, who's also prior Disney star, and they were just being real heart to heart about you know what they're going through, their struggles, their worries, and God, I connected so strongly with that stream. I like my eyes were glued. I was so into it. So not that we have to really talk about it, but if you guys want to get something off your chest about the situation, how you're feeling, how you're doing, are you doing okay? Um, get off your chest now because I mean, I'm lacking some social interaction. Let's be honest. So, but if we don't want to talk about it, you know what? I mean, we're drinking bourbon anyways, whether we're talking about it or not, we're just, we're drinking bourbon. So if you guys have anything you want to talk about, shoot, like send me questions. Um, just want to rant, please, please do. <laughs> um, oh, Steven, that's great. You just got a job offer. It's supposed to start in July. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. I know you're kind of going through something in, weird with your job. So glad to hear that. Um, I just came up with like a racket ball. No, like, no, she was like actually very, very cool. And there, she was just talking about she was worried about her grandparents. Um, her grandparents aren't really up to date with it. And she was having to warn them like, hey, like stay inside a bit. So anyways, while you guys deal with the lag, <laughs> we're going to move on to the Mictor's 10 Rye. Um, I saw a comment about earlier. Brian Brennicky says Mictor's 10 Rye quite a bit more than the 10 Bourbon. Interesting. Um, I think I would probably agree with that. I have had the 10 Bourbon. Um... Mictor's rye is one of my favorites. Their barrel strength rye. Oh my god, you guys know. 
Love it, although I did a blind flight recently and it did not come in first place. So if you missed that, check it out on my channel. By the way, if you're new here, what's up? Um, I go live on Thursdays, um, usually after Perry's stream. I also put up, you know, occasional videos here and there. But if you're new, I would love if you could subscribe. There's a button down there. And you can hit notifications just so you get a little ding when I go live. I promise I won't spam you. I only uh, You'll only get that when I go live or post a video. Um, so yeah, welcome to the channel and enjoy hanging out with you. <sighs> that smells fantastic on the nose. Um, Chris says, um, you can't take it with you when you buy it. You can't take it with you. Um, when you buy it open, it'll last very long. Just open it and enjoy. Okay. I see, I see what you're saying. I miss what you were saying. <laughs> you said, you said about your like, um, auto, your text to speech. So I got you. Yeah. You can't take it with you. So why not enjoy it now? Totally agree. There's a couple of bottles I'm sitting on and really I would, I, I, I moved my special occasion for opening them. First of all, it was going to be, it was originally going to be like, oh, a big occasion, like my 30th birthday or something. Lately, I've been like, you know what? Maybe this birthday or like if I get a raise or something, which isn't happening anytime soon with this going on. So. <laughs> um, just want to catch up with the chat before I move on. Miley has had braces twice and they screwed it up twice. <laughs> you would know that, Joseph. I don't know. Um, see, see even, it's just like, people don't understand. Like it's, it's weird. I've seen memes talking about how, like, normally the parents are talking to the kids like, Oh, don't go out, stay inside, you know, for your safety or whatever. Like don't go out at night or whatever, typically. But now it's like the young people are like, no, wait, grandma, why are you going to Walmart three times a week? Like, stop. Uh, it's, it's frustrating, but yeah, I gotcha. Um, not great 15 year single barrel store pick. Yeah, I only grabbed my nine year because I was gonna do a joke earlier, but I did not bring that Knob Creek. But we have lots more to go through here tonight, so. Travel is a great way to think about that, and I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. Open it when you get it, and then save the next floor for something special. That's awesome. And man, I might go, <laughs> I might go grab my special balls tonight. Not tonight, but I totally agree with that. Oh, Don, congratulations. That's awesome. 31st wedding anniversary. Uh, yeah, I think you should. That's pretty cool. Um, we're actually going to celebrate our three-year wedding anniversary in May. We were going to take a nice, relaxing trip to Mexico to an all-inclusive resort. That's 93.9% .9 chance not happening. Um, <laughs> the resort... Oh, wait, that part's canceled. That part's 100% canceled, but... We are holding out hopes with our flights and maybe something else. Probably not. It's end of May. We'll see. Not holding up my hopes, but congratulations, Don. Anyways, not to bring you down. <laughs> you guys celebrate tonight. This one's to you, Don. Um, this is the Majors 10 Rye. So I, I want to give my thoughts on this one because I, I visited this a couple times, but I want to revisit it. On the nose, it's like a rye, but it's not that burn, like the typical, like really spicy rye. It's actually pretty mellow. I mean, Majors does use a lower rye mash bill. So it's very, very corn forward, but there's, there's definitely some rye. I mean, I honestly, at this point of all the Michter's products I've tried, I can tell this is a Michter's rye just because I love them so much. So cheers, you guys. Cheers, Don. Congratulations. And Don's wife. Mm. So, uh, again, my thoughts about the Michter's 10, um, love it. Oh, that finish is really unique. It twists. There's like a twist right before. It's still that spicy rye corn flavor, but the twist is almost like a cinnamon. And I don't get cinnamon very often on whiskey. Um, I get it sometimes on the nose, but like there's a weird cinnamon twist at the end. I love that. And I wonder if that comes with the age, because what I was going to say is Michter's rye, the barrel strength rye is my favorite rye. It's, it's honestly my favorite rye. That being said, did it blind. It did not win, but... In my mind, it's my favorite rye. <laughs> this one is reminiscent of it. It's not that quite high proof. I believe this is only like 90-ish proof. Um, but that twist it takes with the cinnamon is really, really interesting. Um, uh, Chris has only had the Michter's straight rye. Um, Michter's American. Can't touch the 10 or 20. Yeah. 20, I have not able to see. I mean, obviously. Most people haven't seen the 20. Very true, Stephen. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a bunker. I just have some like 
storage that like aren't easily accessible. I, I limited one of my storages that used to be my special bottle storage to my unopened bottle storage. So I've pulled out the special bottles, put them a little more front and center. So dig into those, but my, my, um, my sp special sealed bottles are still locked away. So we'll see. <laughs> Joseph, I'm only two pours in. To be fair, I did, I did end up, I told you guys on Perry's stream, I was like, I'm not going to drink. And then he poured out some pours. I was like, you know what? I'm going to drink some. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but, but not much. Um, I noticed my browser refreshing here. So I want to make sure I have the full internet connection here. Oh, I'm sorry. You said Cliffy is even worse. Joseph, I thought you said Cliffy was here. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm not that drunk yet, you guys. Like, I'm only like three mini pours in. Um, I have a dining room floor. It works great. Oh, yeah. Mine's right in front of my whiskey cabinet. It's, it's, I'm in an apartment, a one bedroom apartment. So our dining room is kind of our living room, is kind of our kitchen. One of those situations, bottles everywhere. <laughs> so, I, I mean, one, I'm probably going to open my bottle once this is gone. That cinnamon note is fantastic, and I don't get it on the, the toasted barrel or the barrel strength. So that has to come with the age. Thank you for sending me this again. It's it's a fantastic whiskey. And by the way, my Mictors 10 rye, I didn't overpay for it. I, I paid basic, I paid like 130 I think, for it. So maybe a little over retail. Okay, so while we're dealing with rye, I do have one more rye sample to get to. Um, this was a sample from my friend, uh, Jonathan, who is also Juan's friend. <laughs> this is Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 1. Now, I will save some of this because I do have a bottle of the Batch 3 to do a comparison. However, tonight, I just want to do a little bit more of this because I, I honestly have not given this the attention it deserves. First of all, thank you, Jonathan, for giving us giving me a sample of this. Um, fun fact, I actually don't know much about Kentucky Owl in terms of like trying their products. Um, I bought the Confiscated. You guys know my thoughts on that one. I was not impressed. However, I know everyone loves the bourbon and loves the rye. So that being said, I've only tried just a tiny bit of this one. So I'm going to try a bit more of it tonight to get some, a little more thoughts on this one. Now, Steven, I think you may be our um, Kentucky Owl uh, expert in the chat, um, unless Perry's still here. Um, do you know much about the batch one, the age, or anything? I do not have that info in front of me. Um, I could look it up, but <laughs> I, saw, no, I know some of you guys love Kentucky Owl, so you probably know it like the back of your hand. <sighs> okay. That smells more like a rye. I would definitely guess this is a rye up front. I think this was an 11 year old. Yeah. So Steven, so that's, that's what I, that's my thing that I, that's my conspiracy theory. Anyone that actually meets Dixon is like, Oh, Kentucky Owl is amazing. And then those of us that haven't met him, um, are like, eh. It's, it's okay. But to be fair, I haven't had their batched bourbon. I've only tried a little bit of their rye. So, um, yeah, this is their batch one rye, Stephen. So I'm sure Dixon is a great guy. I, I, I would love to meet him next time I'm in Kentucky. Um, yeah, Todd, I actually have the batch three. I have a bottle of it. Um, I didn't bring it out tonight, though, because I wasn't going to do a comparison. This is more about these samples. But I, I'm going to save some, and I may do a separate video soon. Maybe when I get a third... Kentucky Owl product, I made you like all three of them together. Um, cause I have the batch one and the batch three. So if anyone has a sample of the batch two rye, let me know. I would love to do a lineup with all three of them. 11 years. Oh, okay. Thank you, Steven. I, I knew you, you know your stuff. Oh, thank you, Peter too. Both y'all at the same time. So I know the price point of this was really high. That's my thing with Kentucky Owl. It's like, you gotta be really trusting to pay their prices. Their rye is a little more affordable, relatively. Um, oh yeah, finally 4 p.m. done. I was, <laughs> I swear, working from home. I'm like, is it five yet? Am I done? Am I done? I just want to pour. 
Um, by the way, this may not be relevant for you guys, but I just, oh, this is cringe to even say, I just started a TikTok. I know, cringe. But I'm trying to make it bourbon related somewhat. Um, I just posted one today that was like a trending thing to do, but I incorporated bourbon. So if you guys want to follow me on TikTok, you don't have to, trust me, I wouldn't follow myself either. Um, how do I show you my little code thing? As you can tell, I'm totally a boomer when it comes to this. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can see that. Either way, wow, was my autofocus so bad? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so my name on there is just Clifton McDaniel. My full name is on here on YouTube. If you're on TikTok, just follow me. It's a little cringy. It's cringy for me, but just want to throw that out there. <laughs> um, Steven says Batch 1 and Batch 3 are the best. Uh, Chris um, asks, what's your favorite whiskey that's not a bourbon or a rye? Oh, you threw out my two favorite categories, dude. Um, I guess I got to say... Um, Ah, that's a close one, honestly. So there's two that I would pick. I don't know the difference because one's an Irish whiskey and one's a Scottish whiskey. One is Abelor Abuna, um, which is a Scotch, very strong sherry influence, cast strength, delicious. Every time I pour it, it's absolutely delicious. Second one I would say is um, Redbreast 14-year-old small batch cast strength. Um, a few different stores had a pick of it. My store had a batch B pick of it. Um, but just every time I drink it, it's like, it warms me. But I know it's so limited, you can't get it. That Those two are very, very close for me in terms of not a bourbon and not a um, rye. Peter says batch one was 130, batch two was 200. Wow. So let's go ahead and try batch three, or batch one. <laughs> Yeah, that's a rye and that's a high proof rye. Woo, 11 years, 11 years is old for a rye. Let me tell you, I don't think I've ever tried a rye that's old. That's that old. That's, so the weird thing is it's gonna be weird, but that batch one, I almost makes me feel like there's something wrong with my batch three. That batch one, that's, that's so, that's so good. I did not include in my include it in my recent um rye flight blind flight fight rye blind fight fight oh that's hard to say I did not include it because I knew it was hard to get it was discontinued and it was more expensive however that would be a very very strong competitor um that's that's real good um yeah so Steven yeah and I know it's like the corporate thing I get it <laughs> I just I just don't have that personal connection there so i'm viewing it as someone that's an outsider so that's that's the only reason I, if i knew him personally i'd probably feel completely differently so this is not a diss on him at all please don't take it that way <laughs> one says that poor red breast touched his heart yeah that stuff is magical so in, in terms of notes on the nose, it's 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 grassy. Um, almost not not necessarily like a grass that I normally get on a rye. It's almost like a hay, like a dried dried grass. Not necessarily that eucalyptus eucalyptus notes that I normally get on a rye. More so on the palate. It's a little minty on the palate. This honestly is one of my favorite ryes, and I wish I would have included my blind flight. But I had a reason for it. It wasn't accessible. It wasn't something that most people can get their hands on. So, um, Steve and I look forward to going there one day for sure. Um, yeah, I do want. I do want to do a, a fight between the one, two, and three, or the one, three, and four. We'll see. Either way, I'm saving some of this to compare to something else. So I, I didn't want to finish this one off. I'm finishing most of these off, but I didn't want to finish this one off. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and move on from rye, because I know a lot of you guys are bourbon people. This one is actually a sample from my friend who's on Instagram. Um, let me find his username so I can give him a shout out. Yeah, so his, his name is Evan. Um, his username is Brandon Knows This Guy, <laughs> Monroe Doctrine. Um, yeah, there you can see it there. Yeah, so he actually gave me a sample of this one. We met up recently to do a bottle swap. 
and he gave me a sample of a Four Roses single barrel pig that he was loving. So you guys know my thoughts on Four Roses. Originally, I was not a fan, but the more and more I try it, I'm finding certain nuances that I really, really enjoy. I said recently the small batch select, the new small batch product from Four Roses is actually one of my favorite bourbons under $60 or under 50, I guess I would say. Fantastic whiskey. So yeah, Four Roses is next. Go to whatever you have, Four Roses. So I accidentally closed the tab that I saved which recipe this is. So let me pull it up on Instagram real quick. <laughs> Okay, this is a BevMo pick. This is an OESQ um, from 2019. It is... I'm trying to find the age on that. Uh, it looks like it says nine years and nine months. OESQ. 57% uh, ABV. Have not tried this one yet. This one's a, a new bottle to me. So, I wanted to try it first before moving into our next sample that I told you guys about. The 130th. So I, I did want to try this one first. So, okay, you guys agree? Yeah, Small Batch Select is something special. Todd, I completely agree. Um, so, Steve and I haven't directly compared the Small Batch Select to the 130th, but I love that Small Batch Select. So, if I enjoy the, if I really do like this Four Roses 130th today, I will save just a teensy bit and do it directly with the Small Batch Select because I'm not a fan of most recipes of Four Roses. I know, it's weird. It's just not my thing. Um, but that small batch select, whatever that recipe selection for that one is my favorite. So, uh, sorry, Trevor Wilson. I, it, it hit California first for some weird reason. So this one is the OESQ recipe. I believe I like the OE recipes. I could, I did a whole stream. If you guys want to look back through my old videos, I did a whole stream doing like six or seven Four Roses recipes. I do not remember the results. It was a long night. It was a fun night, but it was a long night. <laughs> Lafroig 10. So, Chris, I actually am more of an Ardbeg guy. Um, like the Ar Not necessarily like the normal Ardbeg, but the Ardbeg Oudal is my favorite Ardbeg I've tried, other, other than the special editions that I've had sips of. Um, Lafroig 10, I have not had recently. I've had the Lafroig PX cask, which was... That was almost one of the ones that turned me on to Pete. So I, I need to try more Lafroy special editions. Still mostly a bourbon guy, but I like I like some good pita scotches. So we have some um, Highland Park to finish off here with tonight. I did want to wait till the very end to try that one, but sorry about my lighting being so intense. But hopefully you can see that. <laughs> um, Steven says the 130th is a big influence on the small batch select. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to do them side by side one day, Stephen. Um, like I said, I, I do want to save some of it. Um, Malta de Montreal, check check them out. Um, you're always here. What's up? <laughs> so this is actually smelling really nice and very reminiscent of the the Small Batch Select. Um, I always miss the name, Swami. I always don't want to call you the wrong name. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really, really nice on the nose. Always everywhere. Ooh. Mmm. Okay. I'm feeling that OESQ. Um, uh, Todd's opening up an OBSV. Um, great flavor. Wow, that OESQ almost has like a... The finish is all... Um, what is the... Uh, it's not butterscotch. What is the word? Molasses. Yeah, yeah molasses like almost like a molasses brittle that's really good at first i mean i will say this the recipes of four roses that i don't like are the ones that are a little floral i know four roses floral but some of them are a bit too floral i don't like the regular small batch um i haven't had the old yellow label the basic one in a while I don't like the small batch at all. Like I, I bought a bottle of it and I honestly, I gave it away. It was not my thing. Um, however, can anyone confirm 
if the OESQ, oh, you know what, I'll look it up, you guys. I do want to see if the OESQ is in the small batch select. Um, sorry for the typing. <laughs> I do want to look at the recipes in the small batch select. Okay, let's see. Small batch select, OBSV, OBSK, OBSF, OESF, OESK, and OESF. So, not quite but almost <laughs> either way this is a great pick and I'll, I'll definitely let um evan know that I, I really did enjoy this pick so yeah keep an eye out for oesq that may have actually scored really high on my blind flight it's just been a while <laughs> so that's really good so while i'm looking that up let me look up 130th recipes Um, okay, so the recipes for the 130th, which is I'm going to try next, is OBSV, OBSF, OESV, and OESK. That sounds very familiar. That sounds like very similar to the small batch select, which Steven said earlier, they are um, inspired from each other. So, totally right there, Steven. Almost the same recipes. Of course, those are older and stuff, but... Yeah, that was really good. I, I'm, I, you know, it's weird to say this as someone that's always put down four roses. I'm actually excited to revisit the one thirtieth because I remember not liking it. But something's turned me on, you guys. Something's turned me on, and it wasn't the dickle and it wasn't the knob, but something has turned me on tonight. I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> um, I noticed when I did a stream recently, it automatically set to unmonetized, like no super chats or anything. And I was like, oh no, what'd I say? But I think it was just, I used a different program to stream from. I was like, oh, I don't know. I thought for a second, like YouTube was like, nope, this guy's done. He's too naughty for YouTube. <laughs> but no. Um, so let's do some OE. No, let's do some 130th. Um, liver's been disinfected for three weeks yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. I thought I thought you meant you haven't drank anything for three weeks. Like you were doing like a detox. I was like, wow, good for you, because I am not. Especially with this quarantine going on. It's it's I'll tell you the first couple of days of quarantine working from home were rough because I was like, I have bottles of bourbon right over there. What what could a uh, lunchtime pour hurt? Turns out it ruined my productivity for most of the day. Now to be fair, a lunchtime pour turned into an afternoon pour, turned into a late afternoon pour, so I've gotten better about that, but that was the first week. It, it took a minute, but I'm, I'm kind of finally getting on track. Um, so this is the Four Roses 130th Special Edition, Limited Edition, Anniversary. I, I don't I don't have, Look at my thumbnail. There, there's the bottle there. Um, this is 54.2% ABV. This is from our good friend, um, Richie Gabriel, who's not in the chat, but um, also a friend of Juan's. <laughs> So I'm going to save some of this one. I'll save a little bit left to compare it to the small batch selects eventually. Same, Joseph. My day drinking has gotten really bad and I need to stop. It sucks because my day drinking has gone up and my physical activity has gone way down. I was taking walls, walks when we first started this, but now I've been so paranoid I haven't even been taking walks. I've literally just been staying in the apartment. So it's, it's, it's an interesting times, man. A dry season. Ah, oh, same here. Same here. Oh, man, it's, it's hitting me hard. Steven, hey, take advantage of that, especially when you have something lined up. That's even better. Knowing that if you drink, you can drink all you want right now and still have a job in, I think you said June or July, July I think. Man, drink up. <laughs> Cheers to you again. Um, congratulations on that, Steven. So this is the Four Roses 130th. The 125th is one of the best whiskey you've had. Peter, that's, that's interesting. I've never had that one. I'm really curious to see how this holds up against the small batch select. Y'all are going to kill me if I pick the small batch select over this one. But first impressions on this one, well, not first impressions, obviously, but first impressions tonight on this one are that floralness that I don't like about Four Roses is there. And it wasn't on the OESQ. 
and it wasn't on Small Batch Select. So, God, I may I may have to do a flight between this one and the 130th and the Small Batch Select because I think my guess is, I'm not betting on anything, but my guesses are the Small Batch Select will beat it. Will you guys kill me for that? I don't know. I just really like the Small Batch Select. It's, it's more up my alley. Um... Uh, Indiana says stay home and if there is booze in the house I say drink cheers yeah I've liquor stores around here most of them are um delivery only some of them are pickup um or some of them are actually open it's, it's not really mandated here I have only been I've only been ordering from the ones that do delivery um I hate to pay the delivery prices because I'm cheap and I would rather just go pick it up myself but I really don't want to shop around a store, especially right now. They're just too crowded, too busy. Freaks me out a little bit. So I'm going to save a little bit of that one. But you guys, my, I'm guessing that I'm going to like the small batch sled over that one. So we'll see. Stay tuned um, for another stream in the future. Subscribe down below. <laughs> it's just a little self-plug there. Um... You're going hunting. Oh, Brandon, I thought you meant like hunting, hunting. I was like, you're going hunting. Well, I mean, yeah, food is kind of short. There's some sh shortages on food. Um, <laughs> you mean actually like bourbon hunting. Okay. Not hunting, hunting. But hey, if you go hunting, hunting, could use some meat here or some toilet paper. I really need some toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, no, Brandon's just stopping by. I have bottles for him that I owe him. Um, I'm also going to swap some samples with him so we can do streams together, but remotely. So don't worry. We're going to keep the six foot distance. We're going to meet, swap off a box, sanitize our hands. Good to go. So yeah, all good there, but I'm looking forward to seeing him and I'm looking forward to hanging out with him again soon. So pick up. That's nice. That's nice guy, Davis. Um, I think we have pick up at some stores. So I have one store that's really weird. Um, it's, their app is you can do a pickup store pickup, but their website you can only do delivery. Yet their website has all the good picks on it, like all the good. Do I nearly need toilet paper? We have like six-ish rolls left. Um, we're good. The rolls we have now are like the ones that we. The weird thing is we bought a couple of rolls of toilet paper way before this, and they sucked. They like were the ones that like shred. Like you just do this and like it'll just like flake everywhere, and I was like. Ew, throw those away. But we decided haven't been shopping for toilet paper lately. We've only been doing grocery delivery. So it may be out there. It's just not... <laughs> we're not that far gone that we can't get any or that we're seeking it out. Work done. Drink now. Yes, Brian. Hopefully your meeting went well. Please pull out a drink. I'm about to do my last one of the night. But feel free to drink all you want. <laughs> By the way, if, yeah, I'm, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I'm not leaving. I, I just had a thought that I'll tell you guys about later. Um, let's move on to our final pour of the night. This is Magnus from Highland Park. Now, I could be wrong, but I believe Highland Park is peated. It's not like heavily peated like Isla. Um... Some of you Scotch guys, come out. Now's your chance. You're like, okay, thank God he's passed the bourbon. Where's the scotch? I have tried this because I told a friend I wanted well, This is only 40% ABV, so even if it's beaded, it's not going to blow me away in terms of, you know, knocking my socks off. Studies have shown that people are using 40% more toilet paper at home. Yeah, I, no, I thought he said proof too, Don. I was like, 40, 40 proof? What? Because I literally, I literally just said 40 proof. I was like, 40 proof? 40 proof toilet paper? What? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, that's good, Peter. Yeah, um, it's still pretty bad out here in um, Los Angeles County, but lightly, Peter. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So this one, I don't know the age statement on the Magnus. I think it's like six to seven, I would guess. It's kind of like the Ardbegs. Um, partly Asian sherry seasoned American oak cast. I love sherry. I love sherry seasoned. Fantastic. This is not age stated, so there's no info. Oh, interesting one. Um, this is my first time trying it as my only peated scotch of the night, so I'm, I'm excited to see how it how it reacts. How it reacts. How I react to it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's different. That's not like a oogadol. It's way more fruit forward. There's way more fruit here. 
it's the weird thing is it reminds me of an old Pulteney, which I know that's like a cheap scotch. I know, I know. But I keep going back to that one. That's, I mean, Stephen, I know you like you like old Pulteney. On the nose, this is very similar to an old Pulteney with that briny ocean sea salt note. That's what I would guess off the off the nose of it. I know it's gonna taste a little more peated, but um, cheers, you guys. And if you're not drinking scotch, Lil, <laughs> whatever you said, I missed it. But um, okay. I'm I'm looking at what's cutting out my cutting out my internet. I don't know what's happening. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Um. Yeah. So overall thoughts. I'll say it smells a lot better than it tastes. It smells like an old Pulteney on the palate. Hey, um, tell him I love Michter's. And um, if he has any more barrel strength, rye, hit me up. <laughs> now, we were talking about Michter's earlier, Lil. Um, yeah, I, I had a Michter's 10 sample earlier. So tell him I am enjoying their brand very much tonight. My focus is really bad. I'm sorry, guys. Eh, there you go. Michter's. <laughs> yeah, I would love to try the older, old Pulteney's. I've only had the 12 year. Is it old Pul Pulteney? I say old Pulteney. I'm trying to sound, put the accent there. I don't know. I could be wrong. The peat on this is really, really nice. If you're someone that wants to slowly get into peat, I would recommend this, especially since this is a budget pour. I mean, I don't know the price point on this. Imagine it was in like a gift set that had a bunch of different whiskeys in it. Um, if you don't want to be completely turned off and blown away by peated scotch, this is a great one to get into it. It's there, but it's not, it doesn't completely obliterate your palate, especially at 40% ABV. Um, no, it's not bad. I do. It's it's a really nice flavor. Honestly, I love the flavor. I just wish it was turned up a few notches, um, in terms of proof. That would be that would do it for me. Um, Brian says he believes he had an old Pulteney, twenty one year old from Carl Ivy. It was great. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. Um, Todd Cooper says I'm right. Okay. If I got Todd's approval, I'm good. <laughs> okay. So this was a weird range of samples. I know it was weird. I got some bourbon, some rye, some scotch. Um, my favorite for the night, I would have to say it's either the Kentucky Owl Rye or the, um, Four Roses, O O E S Q. I think I said, um, BevMo pick. Both of those were very, very, very good. Um, third place, I would probably say the Mictor's 10. Fourth place, Mictor, or the Four Roses 130th. I know. Shame me all you want. Fifth place, I.W. Harper. And last place, I gotta say the Magnus. Not because I don't like Pete, but because it didn't really stand out for me tonight. So, um, see you, Joseph. I'm actually about to sign off here. I'm just gonna open up the last three minutes for any questions. Any of these you want me to revisit for like a final pour. Um, but if not, that's cool too. Um, I feel like we did this. I actually enjoyed the stream a lot. I controlled myself. <laughs> last, If you missed last week, I actually had been going for an hour before the stream. So by the time I got here at this point in the night, I was... I was gone, but I left it up because I was like, you know what? I had a lot of fun. You guys seem to have fun. So my one uh, my one regret from that stream was I feel like I didn't interact with you guys enough. I I talked back and forth with Perry. I didn't talk to you guys as much. So that's why I want to open up this last few minutes for you guys. Questions, thoughts? Um, Stephen, Mrs. Cliffy. Yeah, Stephen, I don't know what y'all are up to tonight, but maybe stick around in the chat later because I, I might be up for some some hangouts i'll just say that <laughs> um yeah any thoughts any questions what do you guys think drinking some water here because i need some water drink more water by the way you guys are seeing me dripping it's only because i i spilled water earlier and so it's like all over the bottom of my glass i'm not spilling it every time i drink i promise No questions? If you don't guys, if you guys don't have any questions, that's cool too. <laughs> Just wanted to open it up. One little final final thoughts. I thought the stream went really well. Um, do I enjoy any other Islas? I am trying to figure that out, Todd. Um, I have some friends or recommending me get some um, Port Charlottes. Um, 
like I said, I had the Lerfroig PX cast that I was a really big fan of. Um, I, I don't have too much experience with it. And honestly, I'm not as opposed to Pete as I was like a year ago. Because before I was like, no, never. But now I'm like, I'm, I'm getting into it a little bit. Um, yeah, so that, that we'll see. I, I do want to explore more Islas for sure. Um, Brian, I have not tried the Four Roses 19 LE. I had a bottle and I traded it for, um, some Michter's, Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Cause I was like, not just one bottle. I traded it for, okay. I had a bottle of the Four Roses 19 LE. I traded it for two Michter's Barrel Strength Ryes, a Stag Jr. And, uh, Weller Antique, um, 107, uh, store pick. I love all of those. So I'm not going to complain. So I did not get a chance to try that one, but I am sure it's fantastic. It's, it's just these Ellie's of Four Roses aren't quite doing it for me. And that's why I traded it. Cause I was like, I could love this. I could like it or I could not like it. Let's get some things that I love. Let's trade it for all things that I love. Yeah. So I think that about does it for tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out. Um, good to see all of you again. I feel like it's been a while. It's weird, but that's because I ignored the chat previously. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah. So Brian, I, I would love to try that one. I just don't have it in front of me, but yeah, I, if anyone wants to see me a sample of the 19 LE, let me know. Cause I'm, I'm definitely interested in trying it, but thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Um, had a great time. Good to see you. If you're new here, like I said, hit subscribe, hit the bell button. I go live on Thursdays. Come in. We go, when we go live, um, you get a little notification. Other than that, have a great week. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Stay home. Drink some bourbon or rye or scotch. Just, and anytime you want to chat, like I know it's lonely. Anytime you want to chat, hit me up. I'm on Instagram at Clifton MCDNL, TikTok at Clifton McDaniel. Yeah, that's pretty much the main places. But yeah, find me there. Or otherwise, I'll see you guys on YouTube next week. So cheers. Have a great night and stay safe, y'all. Bye.